Hi everyone, my name is Theo. I am presenting to you what I've been working on for quite a while now. I'm a PhD researcher in deep learning and so I'm very used to writing uh, research code in PyTorch and it requires fast iteration and uh, obviously we would like to get as few bugs as possible and maximum of reproducibility in our experiments. So I've been developing a framework for PyTorch code development and to write pragmatic code and um, to write code that is reproducible and configurable. And this is called Matchbox. So Matchbox has three main features. The first one is a builder feature and it's kind of an app. So I'm going to show you right now. Um, I have this simple data set and we're going to introduce an error here in the load method of our data set. And so this data set class is actually uh, using uh, one of Matchbox's features, which is some dataset mixins. Uh, so these are the mixins, and we are already giving you some sort of uh, frame for how you will define your dataset. But we provide many more uh, useful build features that we'll come back to in a little while. So first, let's introduce a bug in our dataset class. Here, we're going to raise an exception on this line on the left. Right, so we should expect this to fail, and we're actually going to use the builder feature um, of, of Matchbox. So it's now building the configurations, and uh, directly we land in this uh, UI that is uh, designed for debugging your code in real time. And what I mean by that is you can actually go back to your code editor modify the code and reload it. Um, Matchbox is actually behind the scene doing hot code reloading so that you don't have to spend a few seconds every time reloading the entire app, which is loading the configurations, maybe loading the entire data set or the model. Um, the idea with the builder feature of Matchbox is that you get a very focused and digestible UI here, what we have is the exception this is a test exception and we have the entire trace of the exception uh, we have some logs here so this, this is not fully functional and so this code editor right above is an example of what of what will come next but you are always free to use your own code editor and so we're going to go back right now into our own code editor which is vim in the systems and i'm going to remove I'm going to remove this exception, right? I've saved the file. So now, instead of reloading the entire app, we're just gonna hit R. And what it does behind the scenes and what, what Matchbox is giving to you is hot code reloading. So it's reloaded the entire class implementation. And as you can see, I am logging the code on the right, which is some user logs here that you can log anything you want to. So we can see that the code that's been loaded is commenting out this exception. And now we're running the module data set again. The parameters haven't changed. Everything is passed as it was on the first iteration. So we can see our parameters. We can see what Matchbox has been doing, trying to reload the entire class from the dataset.example module. And we can see the output of the uh, callable. In, in this instance, it was partial to the dataset class so we were trying to instantiate a data set object we get the output and matchbox now hangs so you can inspect the locals which is not ready in this version and in the future you'll be able to freeze the data set right here in the top left corner and hit reload so that now you will only load the next in line which is the model and once you've done uh, fixing your data set model loss implementation once you don't have any exception of thrones so you can go very quickly and fix all your tensor operations, then you're ready to start training. And for the training, we're also giving you some very nice UI so that you don't need to go into the cloud and open up weights and biases, synchronize everything, and go into very heavy web apps. You actually get everything in the terminal. So you also get a very, very nice uh, digest of your experiments, the parameters and everything. This will soon be integrated in the UI in a separate tab. 
or what you get out of the box is a very simple API for plotting your losses during training, training validation losses, best model, and you get a progress bar where you can plot the, you can actually um, render the loss in real time and some logs that are completely scrollable. So you will see everything at the same time in the same unified UI. Um, you can play with themes as well. But the idea is that you can monitor training in real time without having to go into some heavy web app or synchronizing data. Everything is integrated with Matchbox and it's a very simple UI with only a few functions. So the final feature I want to demo for Matchbox is the dataset mixins. It's a set of composable components that you can use by a composition in your dataset that give you a lot of power and flexibility, but also a lot of safety for dataset pre and post processing. Um, one very common use case is multi-processing and we're, we're giving everything for you. So all you have to do is use the composable mixin, which is the multi-processing dataset mixin right here. And now all you have to implement is a load function on one sample. You get a few uh, arguments that will help you um, do things such as uh, generate a tiny version of your dataset for fast debugging. So we can observe this. Um, this is also, uh, I'm also using the other nice dataset mixin, which is a, a smart cache. And we'll come back to that. But right now, what we know is this dataset has been um, entirely computed before. And so it's actually very fast because we're caching it. But you can see that this loading of the cache is done on all the cores of my CPU. And everything is lazy in this uh, instance, but everything can be eager as well. Um, so this uh, validation set was not cached and this is why uh, we're spending a little bit of time computing it, but this is, this is entirely in multiprocessing. Now it is cached, so if we re reload it, it will be just as fast as the training sets. But what we're interested in now is the smart uh, safety features associated with this. So if, if you change any parameter in your, in your experiment, for example, change the seed, then let's see what happens. The smart features knows that you have a mismatch in your argument, and so it is prompting you to flush the cache. Now this is this is very nice, just in case you're running an experiment um, and and what you have on your server or in your cache is stale because you've updated the parameters and your cache doesn't save this information. Now everything is done for you. Another very good feature of this smart uh, safe caching mechanism is that if you change anything in your code, for example, just change these digits uh, values here and try to load from the cache again, uh, Matchbox will catch this and show you that there is a fingerprint mismatch in the code. So it's prompting you to flush the cache again. Now, just again to show you how fast it is with multiprocessing. Uh, we're going to flush the cache and this is actually doing the pre-processing of the data set and this is done uh, sorry this is done on all the cpu cores that we have and you can see that not much memory is added because everything is done in a smart way uh, so as to not leak memory and hold everything into memory all at once everything is lazy in this instance and i encourage you to look at the code and the documentation is coming very soon Thank you for looking at Matchbox, and I hope that you will use it.